Welcome to a new unit in the Python Fundamental series. In this unit, we're going to learn about functions. We've seen this term before, however, we're now going to formally introduce this concept. Let's get started with what they actually are. An important technique when we write programs is to not repeat ourselves. That is, avoid writing similar functionality over and over again. To do that, we divide our program into blocks of codes in terms of their functionality. A function is a set of code that is grouped together in terms of functionality and has a name. Using this name, we can call, that is, use its functionality whenever we need it. We've already used a lot of functions provided by Python. Do you remember any of them? Print, input, len, type are just a few that we've used many times in our programs. Whenever we want to print a string to the console, we call the print function. That is, take use of the print function. All of these inbuilt functions, like print, save us from implementing commonly required functionalities by ourselves. Functions make your program easier to understand and develop. They also help us share pieces of functionality with other coders. In this unit, we're going to learn how to write our own functions. That's a particular way of defining functions. We need to follow that structure. Let's start by learning that. A function has two parts. The first one is the header. That tells us the name of the function. And the second one is the body. The body contains the code that implements the actual functionality. Let's learn more to understand them better. The first part of the function is the header, a line of code that starts with a keyword, def, followed by the name of the function, parentheses, and a colon. The second part of the function is the body. It contains the code that implements or defines the functionality. That is, it tells the function operators what it has to do to perform. It's also known as the function definition. All the lines of code that are part of the function definition should be indented to indicate that they are part of the function. In our example, say hello is the name of the function. And to call it, that is to use it, from our code, we'll have to write its name. When we do that, the body of the function is executed. When we call the say hello function, it prints hello. This is great. Now, whenever we want to print hello, we can simply write say hello instead. Functions have another capability that makes them a lot more powerful. A function can accept inputs in the form of parameters. A function's body can then use these parameters to perform the operation. Let's go ahead and learn using an example. Imagine a function called addition that prints the sum of two numbers. If you want to keep the two numbers variable so that you can call the addition function with any two values, you can do so using function parameters. These parameters are added between the parentheses and can be given names. In our function named addition, the two numbers are called x and y. In the body of this function, we print the sum of x and y. When we call addition with values 2 and 4, x is assigned the value 2, and y is assigned the value 4, and the sum, 6, is printed. 2 and 4 are called arguments. If we call addition with 6 and 12, arguments will be 6 and 12. The function will then print 18 in the console. Function parameters allow your functions to return different output values if different arguments are provided. If the difference between parameters and arguments sounds confusing, <laughs> remember, parameters are the placeholders for the arguments. And um, what are arguments? <laughs> arguments are the values provided to the function when you call it. Now, there's an important concept you need to know with respect to variables. All the variables in Python have scope. What is scope? <laughs> Scope is the area in which the value of a variable is correctly identified. 
variables that are defined inside a function have local scope. That is, their value is correctly identified only inside the function. Local, in this case, refers to the function body. There are global variables, too. Their value is identified throughout the entire program. Let's see an example to understand this better. In this example, the variable x is defined on top of the program, and therefore its value is available throughout the program, and that is 5. It's a global variable. Now when we define a variable with a similar name, x, inside the function named scope and assign the value 3 to it, it's local in scope. That is, it is available only inside the function named scope, and the value is 3. It's a local variable. Outside of that function, the value of global x will be used. Local variables are defined at the start of the function, and global functions are defined at the start of the program. We can check this out by calling the function scope, and after that, printing the value of x. While the first one prints 3, the second one will print 5. Hope you got enough clarity about global and local variables. I recommend that you try a few more examples by yourself to just get a hang of the concept. Please feel free to seek help if you need it. Now we're going to talk about the last concept of the unit, the return statement. Inside your functions, you can use the return statement to return a value from your function. They're really useful in case you want to pass any value out of a function. As an example, let's see a function called cooler addition that instead of printing the sum of x and y, returns their sum. This lets the caller decide what to do with the output. Ooh, please do note that code after the return statement is not executed. In this example, see the implementation of is number odd. The return statement is placed before the print statement inside the if clause. And hence, when you give an odd number as input, the function will return true and nothing will be printed. On the other hand, in case an even number is given as input, a string will be printed before false is returned. Functions that do not encounter any return statements essentially return none. None is a special keyword that represents the nil value. Return none is actually quite useful when you want to exit from if, else, or nested loops without returning anything. This brings us to the end of the unit. We've learned about functions, a very useful concept that can make your code smaller if you extract similar blocks of code into those functions. Functions can also help you make your code more readable. In the next unit, we'll learn about CS1Lib, uh, something that will help you draw shapes using Python.